A lot of pushback on this issue. Joining us now to talk about it, the director of the Heritage Foundation's Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom and, Far and former foreign policy advisor under Margaret Thatcher, Niall Gardner, is here. Niall, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining the conversation. Great to see you, Maria. Your Thanks take very much on having these on the tariffs. Your, I mean, this is so much pushback from Republicans within his own party to global CEOs. Uh, even, you know, as, as Dagan mentioned earlier, some of the very people who've helped him on other economic policies, like Steve Moore and Larry Kudlow. Your take. Yeah, I think these tariffs are an absolute disaster for the United States. It will spark a trade war with uh, Europe and other parts of the world. Uh, and I think that this is completely the wrong track for the White House to be uh, taking. I think ultimately these tariffs will cost a lot of American jobs. It's also going to be deeply unsettling, of course, for the, uh, for the stock markets. Uh, I think there's going to be a political impact as well. It's going to result in a major confrontation between uh, the United States and key allies, including uh, Great Britain, also Canada as well. And it's also going to be used as an excuse by... European Union protectionists to implement more tariff barriers uh, in Europe. Uh, and I think that uh, this is going to be ultimately very, very bad news, actually, for, uh, for the United States. I do hope the White House is going to backtrack here and reverse gear and move away from what would be, I think, uh, an extremely dangerous move for this administration to take. Uh, Niall, I just, I'll ask you a question that's been posed on, on Twitter to all of us in the last several days. Then how does this administration take care of the trade deficit? How do we make sure that we as a nation are operating on a fair playing field with all of our trading partners? Well, that's a very good uh, question. Uh, certainly, I think that there's room for improvement with regard to the, uh, the NAFTA agreement in terms of modernization, but also removing, for example, some of the labor regulations, environmental regulations. Uh, I think ultimately the American, the United States strength actually on the world stage is really as a great free trading uh, nation. So the greater the level of economic freedom, the greater the level of economic liberty on the part of the United States, I think the better the deal is actually for U.S. workers and for U.S. Uh, consumers. But if the United States is to retreat into some kind of protectionism, uh, I think that is going to have uh, an extremely negative impact upon the U.S. economy overall. And as my old uh, boss, Margaret Thatcher, used to say, you know, free trade is really the, the vital engine uh, of economic prosperity. And she greatly believed in economic freedom. And America is most prosperous if it advances and protects the principles of economic liberty. Yeah, I understand that, but he, he's saying he is for free trade. He's just for fair trade uh, first. I mean, the, the question which Dagan poses is what the, the administration will come back at you and, 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 and the proponents of this plan who say, look, the U.S. has been on the, uh, on the losing end end of so many of these deals, what's the U.S. to do? Is it okay for India to pay, to, to charge 100% tariff on, on Harley-Davidson motorcycles? Is it okay in the auto sector that Europeans have 10% uh, tariff while the U.S. has 2.5%? I mean, these tariff troubles are weighing even on the NAFTA talks right now. They're set to wrap up on, on uh, today. Secretary Ross weighed in on that trade relationship as well. Listen to this. The president has made quite clear that if it comes to a dumb deal or no deal, he's very likely to opt for no deal. Um, he doesn't need to take a terrible deal. That terrible deal is how we got here. And then the president tweeted this on NAFTA just a few minutes ago, Niall. He says, we have large trade deficits with Mexico and Canada. NAFTA, which is under renegotiation right now, has been a bad deal for USA. Massive relocation of companies and jobs, tariffs on steel and aluminum will only come off if new and fair NAFTA agreement is signed. Also, Canada must treat our farmers much better. Highly restrictive, Mexico must do much more on stopping drugs from pouring into the U.S. They have not done what needs to be done. Millions of people addicted and dying. So, Niall, you know, it's, this is the first time I've heard the president even open the door to an exemption on Canada and Mexico. He said these tariffs will not go away unless, in that tweet, it seems like he's starting to open a door. If they make changes, then maybe they're exempted from these tariffs. Your take. 
Well, certainly I think we've seen uh, some shift in the president's uh, position just this morning, uh, and that's a positive sign. But I think the overall approach, the idea, the very idea that you're going to protect American workers or advance the U.S. economy by implementing protectionist big government uh, policies, I, I think, is, is very, very reckless. And what the president has done over the past 12 months is put forward free market uh, solutions which have greatly advanced, I think, the U.S. economy, uh, basically repealing large numbers of regulations, cutting taxes. This is the way forward. Certainly, there is a lot of protectionism across the world, but the answer is not for the United States to go down the same route of protectionism. Uh, I, do, I do believe that if the president adopts, uh, for example, European Union-style protectionist policies, this is going to have a very, very negative impact for, for the United States. And so the answer is not more protectionism on the world stage. It's more free trade. It's so greater the economic competitiveness. Yeah. You, but you're still not answering the question. Do you have a solution to the U.S. being at a disadvantage, all these deals? Well, I, I think, you know, the, the, the long-term solution, of course, is greater competitiveness on the part of the, of the U.S. economy. I believe the president is making a lot of the economic reforms that are necessary that will advance economic freedom in the United States, okay. that will improve America's position on the world stage in terms of, in terms of trade. Uh, and eventually, I think other, other countries across the world who are implementing protectionist policies will be, you know, begin, yeah. I think, to reduce those protectionist uh, barriers. But the United States must lead and be the shining city on a hill in terms of right. standing up for free Here, trade. Here's Lee this is the best way forward. Yeah, one of my questions, as I watch the president with all of this, is often he lobs these things out there, starts a conversation, and things change. Do you think this is one of his strategies where he's just putting something out there, letting everybody debate it, and hoping that people are going to act and bring different solutions to the table? Um, I think that's, you know, that's quite possible here. And you are seeing the president starting to uh, soften his position a little bit uh, today. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, certainly there are some in the White House who believe that, you know, protectionist uh, policies are the way forward. There are others who believe that these, these policies are very reckless. I do hope the huge backlash that we've seen not mm -hmm. only here in the United States, but also across the world, yeah. is going to really, uh, you know, support the position of those within the administration who are uh, absolute supporters of free trade. Here. Now, now, uh, so I think go, there's everything to play for. Before you go, real quick, your thoughts on the election in Italy uh, and Germany? Yeah, yeah. Th this is this is a huge development. You've seen the the anti-establishment parties pulling in over 50 percent of, of the vote. This is a wow. massive game changer in Italy, has big implications for the future of the euro, the European single currency. All right, Niall Gardner, good to see you. Thank you.